Thank you for listening to Christ Alone Podcast, where we believe that Jesus lived, died, and resurrected according to the scriptures. Our hope is that God can bless you through this week's episode. All right. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Angie and Steven's podcast, Christ Alone, Christ Alone podcast. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Um, thank you for tuning back in. Um, uh, God bless everybody. Um, I just uh, I got a special guest this week, uh, Brother Jose. Um, welcome to the podcast. Amen. Amen. So real quick, just cause I don't want to spend too much time, <laughs> but, um, basically Jose and I, our daughters have known each other since preschool. And so that's how our friendship has come to be. And the Lord has blessed us to be in each other's lives and, uh, in more ways than one. So, uh, but today Jose is on the podcast and we're just going to do a little prayer, see where God leads it. I'll just kick off the podcast and say, uh, Father God, Holy Father, we invite you into this conversation, Father God, because we don't want to speak another word. We don't want to take another step unless it is, number one, uh, approved and allowed by you, and number two, um, that is in the power of the Holy Spirit and for your honor and your glory. Father, let us lean not on our own understanding, but on yours. And um, as we come together um, to, to pray and to call everybody to you, that they turn to you, that your goodness, Father God, can bring them to repentance and the knowledge of truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, brother. So uh, again, thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time to come on. I, I just uh, I don't know. We were having a conversation, and you know, I I felt you know in my heart that uh, I should just invite you onto the podcast because I was going to record it anyway. But um, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's kind of a lot going on in the world right now. Um, almost overnight. Um, you know, what are your thoughts, your initial thoughts on the situation when you heard what happened in Israel? You know, to be honest, uh, I think it kind of caught me off guard. Um, and I'm uh, the type of person where I don't listen to news. Um, you're pretty much my news update guy. Uh, when I receive them on the chat, um, I, I just don't listen to news. Um, but they always seem to come my way. Um, it's a way of God letting me know you must stay updated uh, with the times. And um, once I heard about it, um, it was kind of like when you brought to me um, the news of what happened, you know, recently in your life. Um, it wasn't the same reading a chat where you updated the group versus hearing it from you and hearing your tone. And it kind of set me down to the ceiling of the situation that you were personally going uh, through. And the same thing with the whole Israel attack. It's one thing to just kind of hear about it. Amen. But once, once you begin to see the pictures, uh, see the videos, and just hear the tone and the expressions of the people that are actually grounded over there, it brings a level of reality that I believe, you know, for me in my life, it's absent a lot of the time. I'm, I'm absent of feelings a lot of the times until they strike me. And right now, you know, Israel is one of those areas that it strikes me. It... Yeah, amen. Yeah, Israel, um, you know, I heard, I heard it once said, you know, that uh, somebody was asked if you could... Uh, if you could prove the Bible to be true in one word, what would it be? And 
his answer was Israel. Um, for me, when I when I heard the news, uh, it, again, it was unbelievable because it's something that we can see. Um, those of us that have been watching, um, that are familiar with Bible prophecy, um, you know, the scripture talks about one day armies rising up against Israel. And, um, you know, we've been seeing the shadows of that um, kind of building up over the last few years. And just to hear it, it, um, it immediately causes me to like run to scripture and see like, is this it? Like, is this what it is? And, you know, when our conversation off mic earlier was, was kind of like about that, you know, I was uh, comparing it to, you know, when, when you see the clouds getting together, you know, the sun's out, but then you see clouds forming and the clouds are dark and, and, you know, and you see lightning and you kind of, you, you kind of smell, you know, the way that that particular smell that <laughs> that rises right before it starts raining, you know it's about to rain. And so uh, you don't know exactly when, but you know it's any any minute now. And it feels like, you know, over the last few years, um, that's what this has felt like. That's what the return of Jesus has felt like. It, it's felt like it's, you know, like he's right around the corner and you don't think that there could be something else that could that could point to that being any closer. And and here we are waking up to this news about Israel being attacked, and then and then so much other stuff that the Bible talks about, you know, that that is happening. You know, people's hearts growing cold, um, people being lovers of themselves, um, and that's a reference to uh, I think First or Second Timothy. And, you know, people rejoicing, rejoicing over what's happening to Israel. I mean, it's really sad to see that. (sighs) And not just Israel, just around the entire world in general. But, man, it's just, it's, um, in a way, it, it makes me sad. But it also lets me know that we're that much closer. So back to the, to the rain reference. It's like, all right, like, all right, how much, <laughs> how much more can happen before Jesus actually returns? And so um, I know that on the podcast, we've kind of been going over the book of James and we're supposed to do chapter three. And, you know, we did, you, you know, we did the rapture episode uh, last week and this week we just couldn't, couldn't do a James chapter three without really discussing what's what's going on because I do believe that this is prophetic um, you know Isaiah 17 talks about um, Damascus being wiped off the face of, of you know not being livable basically um, and, and it could be from Israel it could be something that um, you know Israel gets blamed for we don't know exactly how prophecy is going to play out you know, uh, but we have an idea that, yes, Damascus will be wiped and, you know, people will come, nations will come up and rise against Israel and God will protect Israel. I mean, God has done that for the last couple thousand years. It's the only country in history to completely disappear off the face of the map, quite literally, um, uh, and then, and then be born again in a day as it was prophesied, you know, about two or 3000 years ago. So I know I've said a lot, but <laughs> interested in getting some of your thoughts on that. So I'm, I'm pretty simple when it comes to dealing with Israel, um, because of Matthew 24. It's a scripture that God has put into my heart of, you know, take a closer look at Matthew 24. And it's one that I've, you know, I've heard, uh, you know, within my family, I've heard them say it and misapply it, not apply it correctly. uh, Some of the verses and the reason is there's a timeline there uh, and it behooves us 
to understand the timeline. It was a question that the disciples had for Jesus. When will when shall these things be? And Jesus begins to explain uh, the timeline from that time there on until the end of times. And there's no question in, in my mind and my heart that to know what time we're in, we just need to look at Matthew 24 because everything within scriptures, prophecies, all have to fit in within the timeline that Jesus described. And part of it, I find that there's misinterpretation, there is not the right application, and it all goes to how people perceive it and how they're applying it because of how they've been told. To me, the truth is, how is Jesus revealing it? Because there's only one truth. And so when it comes to Israel, I look at Matthew 24 because it all deals with the end of time and the leading up to it. And for me, I found it difficult to understand some of the timeline there, which tells me, Lord, I know you spoke about this long before I was born, but I don't understand. I don't understand the timeline that you set out. I know you spoke. Uh, you spoke of it and I'm reading it. I just don't understand it yet. And because of that, it lets me know that I need to continue searching to understand more um, in a simple way. And that's kind of where I'm at with um, what's happening with Israel. Um, they've been attacked before. Um, they've had wars before. This one is one more that puts us to the edge of you know, could this be the kickoff of starting something that leads to rapture? And understanding, again, Matthew 24 is really key because it lets us know what needs to happen before Jesus raptures his people. What needs to happen? And for me, I'm still dealing with Matthew 24. And I keep reciting Matthew 24 because it's real dear to me. And it's something that I need to continue looking into um, in order to be more vigilant about the time. Amen. 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 Um, you know, Jesus in, in Matthew 24 gives us the parable of the fig tree. And he says in verse 32, now learn this parable from the fig tree when its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves. You know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, meaning those things that, that have to come to pass, those things that are going to happen, um, know, uh, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. And you know, Jesus is making a reference to Israel here. And he says, basically, when when you see Israel, you know, start to give its fruit. And, you know, Israel was born in 1948. And that's when you see uh, what Jesus describes here. You know, we, we saw that branch was ready to become tender and put forth its leaves when, in 1948. And we look at Israel then and we look at Israel now. And I mean, Israel is, I mean, there's, there's so much good to say about Israel in terms of um, prosperity, you know, everything that they do. I mean, you know, they, I, I learned recently that they actually have like an entire, I don't even know what it's called. I guess it's like a, a station or a, that, that basically turns um, salt water into drinking water and it's amazing to me like you hear all this news that they're like oh we're we're short on water we're short on water but you know most of the planet is made of water yes it's not all drinkable but Israel just happens to figure out how to turn salt water into drinking water and now all the drinking, you know, all the water that they have comes from that. And it's not like technically causing them anything because there's so much water in the ocean. Um, so they're definitely, you know, 
uh, the Lord has definitely, definitely blessed them. And, um, yeah, I, mean, I think you're right. I think it's important to, to dive into the scripture and see how, you know, um, the Holy Spirit speaks to us in terms of what's going on in the world. This is a book, you know, the Bible is a collection of books that has existed for, you know, a couple thousand years. And, and it was composed over a period of 1500 years and 40 different authors and it's amazing that we can read this ancient document today and it feels like it's coming off the today's newspaper. Um, I, I don't know any book that could do that continuously throughout time. And to me, that speaks to it being something that is supernatural and divine like only god can do something like that Amen. and um yeah and, and in, in studying the scriptures you know we should have the confidence and we should have the peace in our hearts that god is in control first of all we know that god doesn't lie god has kept his promises and we have no reason to believe that God will not keep his promises moving forward. He will bless Israel as he's continued to do. He will protect Israel and he will come back. And so um, I think this is a, a wake up call. You know, we talked earlier that, you know, I felt that, you know, from 2020, the first two years, God was shaking up the world, kind of like, hey, wake up, snap out of it, I'm coming soon. And two until now, God's been shaking up the church. You know, there's just so much false teaching. This is another one of the things that um, Jesus talked about in Matthew 24. You know, he said, um, you know, there will be false Christ, there will be false teachers. You know, um, if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ or there, do not believe it. Um, false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Which means, by the way, that it's not possible to deceive the elect. Because um, if you've been born again, and that means that you're going to be in the scripture. You're going to know what the truth is, and, and that's going to be the standard and the basis for us measuring the rest of the world. And it's kind of like, you know, putting on a, a pair of sunglasses that lets you see a little bit better, you know, or, or maybe the opposite of that, <laughs> having, having the, the flashlight that allows us to see in the dark. Um, if you're not in the scriptures, you know, you're going to, you're going to stub your toe. You're going to run into things. You're going to knock things over. And you could hurt yourself, except that the type of hurt that is a result of rejecting Christ is a hurt that is eternal, um, separate from the presence of God, the Creator, who really only wants the best for us. And um, I think this is a, a, a good time um, where God is reminding us, you know, Israel is mine, and no matter how many people come against it, I will protect it. And, you know, God says, uh, I forgot where, what verse um, God talks about, uh, you know, the, oh, Genesis. Let me go to Genesis real quick. God talks about, you know, God will bless those who bless Israel and will curse those who curse Israel. And it's Genesis 12, um, verses 2 uh, and 3. Uh, it says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This is, this is a, a, a promise from God that has no expiration date. And so, um, you know, 
it, it saddens me when people are um, um, rejoicing in the destruction and the killing of so many people in Israel. Um, the last report that I saw said something around 600 um, are dead, 2,000 are injured, and over 100 have been kidnapped. Um, who knows what's going on? I mean, but, um, you know, we need to we need to pray for Israel. We need to pray for Israel. We need to play to pray for the enemies of Israel, as Scripture calls us to. And um, we need to pray that um, everyone that's watching, um, that this is something that God uses to bring those to repentance who don't know God yet. And so maybe um, this is just how how we can end it. I, I don't think we need to talk about anything else that's going on in Israel because I think everyone is pretty much eyes locked on Israel and what's going on, or, or at least a lot of people are. Um, there's there's every, every kind of, of uh, whether you're a Christian influencer or not, everyone's talking about what's going on in Israel. And so there's, there's plenty of information on, on that. Um, but I think maybe we can just pray for Israel and, um, yeah, I think, uh, we could just leave it at that, I guess, and hope that God works through this podcast, whoever listens to it, that God can, um, tug your heart, whether it's to reconcile you to him, if you're a prodigal, you know, uh, son or daughter that you, that you come home and, and there's a, there's a guarantee that God's going to receive you with open arms and, and cover you with his robe and, and rejoice and even dance. <laughs> um, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's really what God wants. And uh, for those that don't know him, you know, that you realize that, you know, you live in a fallen world because we have broken God's law. And um, the only way to be reconciled to God um, and to be saved and born again is to accept and believe and to repent and believe in the finished work that Jesus did on the cross. He died for your sins that he rose on the third day as it had been written in the scriptures over 700 years prior to when Jesus um, came to walk the earth. And this is probably a, another important aspect that many don't talk about, that Jesus is coming back. And I think if we keep our eyes on Israel, um, I think that that helps make that very clear that Jesus is coming soon. So, uh, brother, I don't know if you just want to take us out in prayer, and um, and we'll end the podcast with the prayer. Actually, uh, we should both pray. Uh, you can um, you can start, and then I'll finish it up. Okay, okay. So, um, before I go, I'll just say that um, you guys can find us at ChristAlonePodcast dot com. All of our handles are Christ Alone Podcast, except for X, formerly Twitter which is Christ Alone Pod, and our phone number is 407-796-2881. Feel free to call, text uh, with questions, suggestions, prayer requests, um, testimonies, whatever it is, just hit us up and uh, we'll see if, um, you know, if it's something that God wants to, you know, wants to put on the podcast, if it's something that has to do with that, or we'll pray for you, whatever the case um, all right. So, Father God, thank you again for allowing us to to have this moment, to have this opportunity and fellowship and, and honor and, and glory for you alone, Father God. Father, we, we want to we want to raise up Israel. We want to raise up the people involved, the Palestinians. We want to raise up the enemies of Israel, Father God, also, we want, we pray, Father God, that, that you change their hearts, Father God, as, as only you can. We pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit into not just the enemies of Israel, Father God, but the many in Israel who, who 
who don't know you, Father God, we pray that you pour out your spirit, that you re replace their hearts of stone with, with hearts of flesh, Father God, that they, that they may recognize, Father God, the truth in your Son and, and the finished work of Christ on the cross, Father God, that your goodness, that your kindness, Father God, can bring them to repentance, Father God. We pray, Father God, that, that this serves as a wake-up call for the many, Father God, who are lost, that, um, that it does that for them, but also that it reminds those who have maybe forgotten about you, Father God, that it reminds them that you are coming back soon, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you, that you protect everyone who may be in danger, that you comfort them, that you give them peace, Father God, that you make your presence known, Father God, that whatever happens, whatever, however this situation gets resolved, Father God, that it is for your honor and your glory, Father God. We understand, Father God, that everything is, is in your control and that things cannot happen unless you allow them to happen, Father God. And I pray that you give us the wisdom, Father God, and the understanding and the discernment to trust in you, Father God, and you alone, because we, we may never know, and you may never show, show us or reveal to us why you allow certain things to happen, but because of your word, Father God, we know that you're a promise keeper, Father God, and we know that we have no reason to doubt, Father God, that you will keep your promise to continue to bless Israel and to bless those who bless Israel, Father God. But at the same time, your justice will not allow those who curse Israel to go unpunished, Father God. And we pray, Father God, that if those who are resigned to not repenting, Father God, that you bring justice over those people, Father God. We pray for the protection of Israel, Father God. We pray for the protection of the many that surround Israel who have no idea what's going on, Father God. In Jesus' name. Father, I join to my brother's prayer and to the many prayers that are reaching the throne at this very hour. We're all in one mind and one accord, Father, to bless your people. Father, we're even asking for our enemies, Israel's enemies. God, we're asking for peace, for you told us to pray for peace, Lord. I pray that in this world that has fallen apart, God, that we may all hold our part, and that as these times continue to show us that this soon will end. I pray that we may continue to work in what we have to work on, God, within our homes, within ourselves, so that we can be ready. We see Matthew 24 being fulfilled little by little, God. Our eyes are opening. And all I pray, Father, is for your body to see that the time is at hand. Father, when the time is up, the time is up. And all I pray, God, is that we may all have oil in our lamps. And I know that through your word, we know that not all will have oil in their lamps. But I'm praying, God, for those who are appointed to have oil. God, for you to stir us all up and make sure that we have oil in our lamps, Lord. We do pray for Israel, God, and we do pray for their awakening. We do pray for their time with you, Messiah. For it is an appointed time that you have for them, and your heart is yearning for them, Lord. I pray that all the details that need to be put in their place, God, that you may start lining them up, move so that your glory may be seen across the world, God. Move so that you may have your place in this fallen world, God. Restore things anew, Lord. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, lift up your people. Lift up Israel. Save, O Redeemer. Keep your word and may it be established. And may our eyes see 
May our ears hear, God, and may you heal the nations as you have promised, all in its according time, Lord. We pray that in this war, your mercy and your grace may be established further along the way, God. May there be a need for you that is stirred in the people of Israel, God. May their need for you be even more. And may you rise up, Lord, O King, and take your place, your rightful place as King of the universe, as King of Israel, the King of kings. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we pray. Yes, Father, and also as you increase in our hearts, as you pour out your spirit and you increase, Father God, that we may decrease, Father God, all for your honor and your glory. Jesus, we ask that you keep your promise to come quickly and redeem us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Um, that's all for this episode. And like my sister likes to say, if we don't see you next time, we'll see you in the clouds. <laughs> Amen.